Great Lakes. These mighty basins contain nearly 23,000 cubic kilometers of water. This is one-fifth of the world's fresh water supply. You might say, that's enough water. But nothing could be further from the truth. Of all the water on Earth, only 2.8% is fresh. Of that 2.8%, 70% is stuck in snow and ice, 30% is groundwater, and about 0.3% is accessible to humans and animals via rivers and lakes. So there is a huge shortage of water in this world. And population growth and climate change are rapidly exacerbating that problem. Water scarcity is also a problem in parts of the US, where water consumption is relatively high. For comparison, a person from the Netherlands consumes about 130 litres per day, but an American uses approximately 570 litres of water per day. That's quite a difference. The US also has problems with water contamination and flooding, and there is great hunger for smart water solutions in this immense country. But what exactly does it take to enter the American market with smart water solutions? Agnes Dirksen of the Dutch Water Alliance reports. Dat is eigenlijk een hele interessante vraag. Want hoe ga je nou als Nederlands watertechbedrijf je waterinnovatie naar de Amerikaanse markt brengen? Nou, dat gaan wij vandaag uitzoeken. In Nederland heb je natuurlijk de Water Alliance en in Amerika de Water Council. En dat zijn beide clusterorganisaties die Nederlandse ondernemers zouden kunnen helpen bij het betreden van de Amerikaanse markt. Maar hoe dan? Nou, dat gaan we ze zo meteen vragen. Stefan, you are a business developer at Water Alliance. Why is the US market so interesting for European water tech companies? Well, first of all, the US is a very big market, so there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, secondly, there are a lot of water challenges, just like in Europe, of course. And the Netherlands and the rest of Europe, there are a lot of solutions for these challenges. And thirdly, there's also money in the US. So, for example, the Biden administration, they also do new legislation. Uh, the infrastructure, infrastructure bill, so there are a lot of opportunities at this moment. Just like anywhere else, the United States has got huge water issues, you know, whether that's from PFAS to phosphorus, stormwater issues, uh, you know, it's the whole array of topics that would be anywhere in the EU. I think the biggest thing, though, is the fact that there's been such a big investment at the federal level of more dollars, billions of dollars into the market. So that makes it attractive uh, for European companies that have unique solutions. We have some 210 uh, Dutch members, mainly being uh, companies who, pre, who develop water technology. What we do for them is bring them into contact with uh, potential partners, for instance, in the North American market, so like the US and Canada. Uh, we have many, many relations with cluster organizations in the U.S. Well, each state, in fact, uh, has a cluster organization in water tech. So I think uh, we have at least intensive contacts with many uh, 10 to 15 of them. Water Council, in fact, in uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, is one of those water clusters in the U.S. Uh, we collaborate already since uh, 13, 14 years with them. 
Uh, it's a sort of the same type of water cluster as Waterlines is. We are based at Water Campus in Leeuwarden and have all kinds of facilities around us like a research institute and demonstration facilities. In fact, that's uh, almost the same with Water Council in Milwaukee. They also have access to universities and have a uh, possibility to start offices around them. Uh, in that respect, we do a lot of things together. What we offer is a place called the Global Water Center, which is located in Milwaukee, which is where we are headquartered. We're about an hour and a half north of Chicago, just to give you a sense of a place. But it's a facility that is set up for water technology companies. Uh, we are obviously, as I said there, uh, Xylem, Badger Meter, Beckoff Automation have their headquarters and operations right there, as well as a number of engineering firms. So it's a place to be able to get plugged into a network of water professionals. The other thing which I think is the advantage for small startup businesses from uh, Europe is we've got a space called the Oasis. So we've got 12 spaces where companies can come in, take on a desk, very low cost, low level of commitment, and to be able to you know, get their grounding and, and land as a soft landing zone. So uh, the relation with Water Council and other water clusters helps us to uh, help our companies to uh, have an easier access. And, and I think the other thing is that, you know, we have the advantage, we've got somebody in Europe, Beverly Ferrara, who is in Ireland, who makes it easier for those companies as they look to explore to come into the U.S. First connection to Beverly, she can help lay out the foundation of what the strength is, but you need to have that trusted partner um, in, in some place where you're going to be respected and taken uh, under our wings. We can not only help the Netherlands and European companies come to the US, but now we see also the other way around. A nice example of that is that we just uh, have uh, helped the company AquaCycle from California open their first European office in, uh, in Leeuwarden at the water campus. And from there they hope to explore the European market. So you see, it's, it's both, uh, both ways. Nederlandse ondernemers werken keihard om hun watertechoplossing naar de Amerikaanse markt te brengen. Maar andersom gebeurt ook. Amerikaanse ondernemers weten steeds beter Nederland te vinden. En wat houdt ze bezig? Ik ga kennis maken. We have a, uh, a sustainable um, product to monitor and control algae. In reservoirs and uh, lakes. It's, um, uh, it was developed about 12 years ago by our founder and um, it's a chemical free way to control algae in, in lakes and reservoirs. So it's uh, very eco-friendly and um, that's really um, the premise for our product. So AquaCycle provides distributed industrial wastewater treatment which is energy neutral and carbon neutral. Our innovation is good for the world in that we can address the very significant discharge coming from industrial clients in a carbon neutral way. What's your American dream for LG Sonic? So I, I want to make it a, a, a product that's um, um, used at any drinking water reservoir or lake that, that needs our product. And actually my, uh, you know, my hobby is sailboat racing and uh, I, I want to see kids being able to get out in the water and sailboat race rather than be limited to being on shore. So my American dream ultimately is to be able to have a sustainable business that makes an impact in the world. But to realize that that dream uh, requires 
Well, it requires a lot of support. Uh, it requires a, a village of people, a team of people that are as equally driven to, to see it get done. And um, that's, that's, really, that's really what it takes, persistence. We have uh, uh, collaborations with, the, uh, with the, the water alliances in the United States, the Water Council, uh, as well as uh, you know, a variety of different coalitions. And so uh, through those introductions, we met Hein Mollenkamp at the Water uh, Alliance in the Netherlands. And uh, as we started to really explore you know, what will be the best place for us to set up an office, it made natural sense that it was going to be the Netherlands. And if it's in the Netherlands, it's got to be at the Water Campus. <laughs>
the, 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 there are a few ecosystems. Um, there, there is a B2B attitude more so than in other areas. Um, and within the Midwest, for instance, you have a strong life science and health sector in Minnesota, which stands out. Uh, there is, of course, a very big agri-tech and agri-food sector throughout the Midwest, but within Chicago, it is strong uh, because of the packaging, the logistics uh, uh, hub that it is. And everybody, of course, knows Detroit, and Detroit has a strong uh, mobility sector. Here in Chicago, we put an emphasis on water tech. So we did some research and we discovered, okay, if, if you want to do business in the Midwest, water tech might be uh, the way to go. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing and that's why the, the web tech is here, the, the big trade show, where we're showing 12 Dutch companies uh, to an American audience. One thing is to, uh, I call that lawyer up. You gotta be willing to pay for a good US lawyer that guides you through your contracting or whatever you wanna do. You need to protect your product, your European uh, trademark is not gonna work here. Your European patent is not gonna work here. It's a US market, it's got its own dynamics. You need a lawyer and it's gonna cost you, but it's sure it's gonna save you in the end. That's one thing. The other thing that's important in the US market is to uh, be able to have some small talk. And with small talk, I mean, you gotta know how to chit chat with Americans. They are ready to do business. They, they can go fast. They might say, let's do business and you think you're there. That's not the case. You need to follow up. Uh, you need to make sure that you know what you're presenting. But the small talk at the same time is also important. No small talk in religion and no small talk in politics. That doesn't exist. The most important thing in, in, in any business is that you um, solve a problem. My biggest advice, I guess, would be to, to start with a, with a, just start with a small first company, start with some, some first projects, gain some, uh, some references, um, and based on that you can move on. Um, exclusivity is, is always a, a topic in, in, in uh, discussions with, with new partners. Um, and this is something to be careful about because we realize that people have a uh, uh, big ambition uh, but in the end sometimes it's, uh, the sales is, is a bit less than uh, as expected. Well, it looks simple but on the other hand it is also complicated at the same time to go to the US. Uh, they have their own rules and they are most of the time very different than Europe. Advice is really to understand which state you want to begin with. So the United States is very diverse. We, you know, we're federally regulated, but uh, every state has nuances, tax regulations, environmental regulations. Um, and so it's as you're selecting a place to get started, definitely research the state and what the advantages will be for your business, depending on where you go. Yeah, the biggest hurdle to realize the, the American dream for PB is, is focus, absolutely focus. Because the country is huge, the opportunities are huge, um, so we have to focus on, on the market and maybe even uh, geographically on, on some kind of states. Well, I think, I think it's the um, comfort of the uh, companies in the U.S. Uh, with a, a foreign um, business. We formed a U.S. company specifically uh, for that and I think uh, we're recognized as a U.S. company now. So I think that's important. I, people are more comfortable um, buying a product that's from their country. I think that can be, um, especially the U.S. as big as it is, we have a lot of products. Mm -hmm. So they don't do a lot of purchasing outside the U.S. Well, for me is that, uh, as mentioned, there are a lot of challenges in the U.S. We identify them, but the biggest barrier, I would say, is to find the right, let's say, case owner for those challenges. Oh, there's more than one hurdle. <laughs> so my biggest barrier yeah. is um, uh, that here in the United States, people know the Netherlands. You cannot assume that the Americans know that we are good in certain sectors. So you need to work on that. That's my biggest challenge. We're a small country. Um, we bring a lot to the table, but you need to tell the story. 
with the impact of climate change, we don't have time. So how do we speed things to market? That's probably the biggest challenge. The technology is there, but it's the adoption uh, across from regulators and utilities and industry as well that is critical. You know, we're not like an app for a phone that, you know, if it doesn't quite work the right first time, you just send off a bug in our, you know, fix. We can't do that in the water space. We've got to be able to right at the first place uh, and go all the way through. So that creates those challenges. But if there's a way to speed that up, we, should be, we need to be able to do that. Rooftop in Chicago. Het is een beetje druk, want er is een feestje aan de gang. Dus ik hoop dat jullie mij goed kunnen verstaan. Maar ben jij nu een Nederlandse watertechondernemer en wil jij zaken doen in Amerika? Weet dan dat er heel veel partijen jou kunnen helpen. Zowel in Nederland, maar ook in Amerika. Check de websites en tot ziens!